Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft's brand new version of Windows 10. It's called Windows RT. Wait, that, does, that doesn't sound right. Oh, my bad, it's called Windows 10 S. Now I'm gonna to explain to you guys why there is a little bit of confusion in that space as the video goes on. But before we start anything, let's go ahead and hear what Terry Meyerson, the vice president of Windows at Microsoft had to say about this new SKU. He says, and I quote, Windows 10 S is streamlined for simplicity, security, and speed so that it runs as well on day one as it does on day 1000. But the full Windows peripheral ecosystem is available, meaning you can still plug things into Windows 10 S from STEM tools and lesson plans to robots. Now, I think that that is absolutely a positive and cool goal for Microsoft to have for educators. And what they're really saying when you read between the lines is that they've locked the device down so much that it can only run software from their store, even though the device is more than capable of still running everything in the x86 or x64 library of software. Now, before we all panic, Microsoft does offer an upgrade to go up to the pro version of the operating system, which will unlock the ability to run whatever software you want for about 50 bucks. But the sad thing is they just released their new Surface laptop, which comes with the S version, which means it can only run stuff out of the Windows store, even though it's a thousand dollar all the way up over two thousand dollar premium laptop, which doesn't make any sense to me. So once you buy the laptop, you find out immediately if you want to run Adobe products or anything that's not in the Microsoft store that's blessed by Microsoft you have to pay them another $50. Now to me, that sounds like extortion. Now let's look at some of Terry's arguments as to why the SKU exists. He says that it's lighter weight so that it can run on low end hardware. Okay, Windows 10 is already incredibly lightweight. Let me explain to you guys just how lightweight it is. When I was working at Microsoft on Windows 8, which is the foundation of the Windows 10 source code, they were building a product alongside it called Windows RT. Now the idea with Windows RT is that it ran on ARM capable hardware. So like really cheap and expensive like laptops and tablets that had ARM chips in them. Now, the nice thing about ARM is they're very, very power efficient. They run forever, they're inexpensive. They seemed like a great platform to, to build on, but there is one huge problem with ARM, and that is it is incapable of running x86 or x64 software. And if they try to emulate it, it's incredibly slow. So what happened is Microsoft ended up shaving down the entire operating system so that it could run on ARM hardware. And that's why the PC version of Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 run so well, is because they literally had to trim it down to work on the lowest common denominator, which were these ARM devices. Because it doesn't make sense for Microsoft to build two completely different products in parallel. What they do is they use one code base and then they slightly alter some of the things on top of it. Now, because they wanted to build an ARM version of Windows, that meant converting all of the x86 and x64 code of the operating system over to ARM, or as much of it as they needed to make the ARM experience work. Now, let me tell you why that failed miserably. The problem was the Surface RT, which was their version of the Surface that shipped that was the ARM architecture, confused the hell out of people. Everybody went and bought this thing, including some of my family members, and they're immediately asking me why they can't install Origin, why they can't install Steam, why they can't put their own programs on it, why they can't put Chrome on it, why they can't use the browser that they want. All they can do is run the crap that was in the store. And let me tell you at the time, the Microsoft store was a barren wasteland. There was nothing there that anybody wanted. And there was a lot of spammy things like people creating apps that were like Girls in Bikini 1 through B Girls in Bikinis 45. That was an app that you paid $5 for that just showed girls and bikinis that you could swipe back and forth using the default example that Microsoft gave in the SDK. So as you can imagine, people got pretty pissed off and there was no upgrade path. So they brought it back to the store and they dumped it in Microsoft's lap and they were like, here, this is some BS advertising. So honestly, there are not a lot of RT devices still out there in the wild. That was a failed product out of the gate. Like literally it didn't last a couple of months before Microsoft was like, ah, oh, crap, we really screwed up on this one. So now let's fast forward to Windows 10 S, the reboot of RT. Now let's talk about the positive points here before we, before we beat it down too hard. Let's talk about the positive points. One, it's based on x86 and x64 architecture, which means that the operating system is more than capable of not only running the store applications, but it can also run Win32 applications, but big but here, they have to come from the Microsoft store. That means if you want to install Steam or you want to install Origin, Nope, you can't do it because Microsoft will not bless those apps and allow them in their store because they're competing platforms. Do you want to run emulators? Emulators run on everything. They're really low bandwidth. Like, do you want to play your old Atari games? Do you want to play like old stuff that's way out of copyright or your MAME emulator? Nope, can't do it. Windows 10 S, unless it's in the store, you cannot run it. Now, Microsoft claims that the reason they did this was to lock down the platform for educators so that they could keep kids from farting around and playing games in the room and installing malware and viruses and all kinds of crap on the computer hardware when they're handing it out to them. 
And let me say that is that is an admirable goal. Like that that should be like praised that Microsoft would want to be so conscious of what the students were running on this hardware. But let me also express that all IT workers in every version of Windows all the way back to like Windows 2000 had access to group policy, which allowed them to go in and enable things that allowed people to install software, basically stopping into stall shield. They also have ways in there that you can stop the execution of any executable or program that's not already on the box for the user that's logged in. So arguably all the features to control what software can run on the computer were already at the disposal for every other Windows SKU. The fact that they're advertising this as something new is really annoying and misleading, but they do put a fancy new UI on it that makes it easier to manage. I'll give them that. It is easier to manage than the old school group policy stuff that teachers of old would have had to learn. So that's the biggest complaint that I have with Windows 10 S is that it's locked down to their store, which means people are gonna go and buy it. And let me ask a serious question here to you guys. Think about this really long and hard. When you see an S at the end of something, do you immediately think sport? Or do you immediately think like smart? Or do you, th do you think of a good word? Like when you go buy a Porsche, when you buy a Porsche Cayman and then you buy a Porsche Cayman S, does that S make you feel special? Does it make it feel like it's the good version of the operating system or car rather? Well, now you have the same problem here. Microsoft's marketing is screwed up. They should have called it Microsoft 10 L for limited or Microsoft 10 uh, small edition or compact edition or limited edition. They should not have called it S because now everybody's gonna get this and be like, oh man, I'm running Windows 10 S. This is the latest and hottest, greatest version of Windows, which is what they want people to think. But you're gonna find out really quick that you can't run anything that's not in the marketplace. So for me, it's completely a non-starter because I need Adobe software, I need Steam, I need Origin, I need to be able to do software development where I run my own code on my box and choose what IDEs I use to program in. All of that stuff I need. So that means if I buy a device that has Windows 10 S on it at the pony up another $50 that I didn't know about is the, is the average user to basically be able to use that software in the first place. I find it hugely misleading. I think that Microsoft's marketing is starting to really chase after some of the other companies that are doing unscrupulous crap. And it bugs me because Microsoft used to be the company that they were an open book. They would tell you right to your face what you're getting. Sometimes in technical terms, you might not understand, but at least give you a route to go and do some investigation. And now they're dumbing it down and they're like, oh, you guys, man, you know, you need this new Windows 10 S. It's so awesome. Your computer's never gonna crash and it's gonna run as good as the first day. Well, let me tell you something. Let's address the second thing that Terry Meyerson said. Your computer will run the same on the thousandth day as it does on the first. What in the hell are you guys basing that on? Your store is full of crapware. If you go look at your store, just like I said, there's still apps in there. They're like bikini girls. And people that buy RT10, including educational institutions, the people are still gonna be able to go download these apps that educators are not gonna want running on the box. You didn't prevent that. And the mechanism that the educator uses to stop them from installing it on the box also worked with Win32 apps. So why did they do this? I'm gonna tell you guys why, for the same reason they did it in RT, and that is because nobody is adopting the store. So they think if they can flood the entire ecosystem with inexpensive devices that are cheaper than Chromebooks, that people are gonna to flock to it, and then they're gonna realize and start living with the limitation of the Microsoft Store, and that's gonna open up developers' eyes, and they're gonna be like, maybe I should start writing apps and submitting them to the Microsoft Store so they can take some of the profit from me selling my app in their ecosystem. Maybe, maybe that's a good idea. Now they hope that that would happen when they did RT. They're hoping that that happened with Windows 10 S. I don't think it's gonna happen. And the reason why I don't think it's gonna happen is because the Windows store is incredibly limited. They're, in they're incredibly biased about what software they allow into that ecosystem. And it's gonna piss off a lot of people. And they can also pull software back. Let me give you an example, Flappy Bird on iOS. How would you feel if you went and installed Adobe Premiere through the Windows Store, it's not there though, Don't, I'm, I'm, this is hypothetical. Let's say Adobe finally decides they're gonna shill and give Microsoft the 10% or whatever. They're in the marketplace, now I install them. Now, a week later, Adobe decides, Microsoft, you're taking too much of our damn money, we wanna pull our app out of your store. Well, guess what that means? You no longer get to run that app. That app that you paid money for in that store, you can't go and like buy another device and transfer it with your account and install it. No, it's gone. You just, you lost that night and I cannot stand that ecosystem. Now, a lot of people might come back with the counterpoint of iOS already does this, and so does Android largely. Let me go ahead and tell you the differences here, guys. Android devices are ARM-based. Well, most of them are, there's, so there's some deviation there. Are ARM-based, which means they already run a limited library of software that's targeted at that device. iOS devices 
also are not x86 or x64 based. They're a lower level architecture that runs very, very fast and very, very power efficient. And from the ground up, that ecosystem was created to just run the apps that were in those stores, or you could you know, jailbreak it and run whatever you want but they were built from the ground up. The problem that I have here is Windows is going the other direction. Microsoft is saying that the laptop that you just bought for $200 is more than capable of running Steam. It's more than capable of running Origin. It's more than capable of running your favorite little 2D side-scrolling game or your emulators, but no, you don't get to because we own the store and because you bought this cheap laptop, you're agreeing to only ever buy software from us ever. Nobody else, you are committed to us and if you don't like that, well then tough shit. You'll just have to go and spend 50 more dollars to get the pro version, which is the exact same fricking operating system with one little flag somewhere in the code that says it's okay to run stuff that wasn't downloaded from the store. And just to be crystal clear here, folks, you can run Win32 applications on the Windows 10 S. You can, everything's there, the subsystem, all the files, everything. It is Windows 10 Home Edition basically with the desktop disabled and a couple things added so that educators can better manage the box. And they slimmed it down a little bit to make it quicker to deploy and quicker to install in the educational ecosystem. But what pisses me off is why didn't Microsoft install that in the pro SKU, right? And just give it to everybody. Just add, add a thing in the pro SKU where the educator can flip a button and restrict them to only download things from the store. Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they put the option in the educator's hands? Well, because most educators are not gonna limit it because like Terry Meyerson says, the full Windows peripheral ecosystem is available, meaning you can still plug things into Windows 10 S from STEM tools to lesson plans to robots. Oh yeah, you can, you can plug them in, sure. You can even load the drivers for them, but can you run the software that interacts with them? Can you create a standalone application that you then share with other Windows users without having to go through the store or through some obfuscated developer licensing agreement thing? Are you able to truly develop on that platform? No, the answer is no. You can develop on that platform and you can use a developer license to have like a couple of people test your code and then you can put it on the Windows Store and then you can give Windows a cut for selling it or just give it away free on their platform and then they can just put advertisements and crap in front of people. But the fact is you're tied to Microsoft. How is that good for educators? Educators are supposed to teach different technologies. They're supposed to teach Linux. They're supposed to teach Microsoft. They're supposed to show the differences. They're supposed to talk about, they're not supposed to be locked down. If they're doing stuff like robotics design, they're supposed to be using open source components and things that work everywhere. So why would you lock them down? That doesn't make any sense in my head at all. And I've seen quite a few people on Twitter defending Microsoft's decision to create the SKU, saying that it's great for educators because educators don't want their kids like looking at porn and playing video games and stuff in the classroom. Well, I've already put that myth to rest. There's already mechanisms built in. There's even parental mechanisms built into every version of Windows since like Windows 7 that allow you to say that they can only run these apps. If the educator is gonna control what apps go on the box, the educator needs to control what apps go on the box. Just limiting them to the Windows Store doesn't protect them. They could still go download an app from the Windows Store that, that kills the resources on the machine and causes you to reboot. They could still download something from the Microsoft Store that has a bug in it that causes you know some kind of buffer overrun or a blue screen of death in Windows causing a reboot and losing all your work. They're not protected against that. Terry says that security is what makes this really cool. Security. It's all about the security of this. How are you secure by being limited to just downloading from Microsoft Store. This means you can't download other malware tools that aren't available on the store. You can't download other antivirus programs that are available on the store. And Microsoft does not check every single line of code to every app that's submitted to their store. They take the binaries, not the code, because Microsoft would be in a really bad predicament if they were storing the source code of everybody's proprietary projects. So they can't guarantee that there's no virus or no malware or no hack in their thing because all they're doing is scanning it with what they have. They're severely limiting you. But I do wanna emphasize, and, and I haven't checked, I haven't checked yet, but I am gonna bet you guys that Microsoft puts Windows Defender and Windows 10 S. And if you guys don't know what Windows Defender is, it's basically a shrewd antivirus malware tool that's built into Windows at a low level so that it doesn't eat a lot of resources. It's actually quite good and I like it. I like it a lot in Windows 8 and Windows 10. It's actually saved me a couple of times, but they're gonna install that. And my question is, why? is Windows Defender on a box if they are sure that every piece of software in their software library in the store is perfectly clean and poses absolutely no threat or danger? The answer is they're not. There is no way that they can be aware of that. Even if they run their scanners, things can go right through the scanners that are new exploits that aren't known. Remember, the scanner can only clean what it knows. 
So somebody has to get infected. Somebody has to download it and get screwed over first. So they're putting Windows Defender on the box. And, and here, I'll, I'll digress just a little bit there. It's good that they're putting Windows Defender on the box. I would rather them do that. But my point being is, if they're so sure that it's so much more secure than being able to run your own apps that you download from your own sources, just because you're constrained to the Windows Store, why would they put Windows Defender on it? And again, I'm speculating here. You guys might come back and bite me in the ass in the comments and said, ha ha, there is no Windows Defender. They cut that out because, and I will eat my own words, guys. I'll eat my own words down in the video description. I'll say, hey, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. They did take Windows Defender out. Oh God, you know, they do have faith in what they're doing, which again would be the wrong decision by Microsoft. So I hope Microsoft did leave it in because knowing what I know about the Windows Store and the development process and the scanning for viruses, that would be a really stupid thing for them to leave something like that out, especially since you can't protect yourself by going and getting, you know, some other antivirus program like Norton or Avast to protect yourself. And the last thing I want to bring up before I end this incredibly too long video is that you are now stuck with Microsoft Edge. Yes, your web browser for the eternity of using Windows 10 S is Edge. Oh, and you have to use Bing as your search engine. Yeah, you can't change the default search engine in the Edge browser on that to Google. They're, they're, they're forcing you to use Bing now. So Microsoft's new tactic under the rule of Satya Nadell is do everything you can to force the user to follow the path that we want them to. Not to be creative, not to be innovative, not to empower people to do their best work or do their best things and make money that way. Let's just do what all the other asshole companies are doing. Pull everything together in a pipe and force them. If you wanna play, you gotta be in this pipe. And before you guys say, oh, you can just pay the $50 and upgrade to Windows 10, Pro, that, that's true, you can. You can pay the $50 and upgrade to Pro, but realize they're giving away that Pro upgrade to educators for free. So if they're giving away the Pro upgrade to educators for free, why didn't they just give them Pro in the first place with the options that they put in Windows 10 S so that they could control everything and then everybody would have that ability. Even parents could utilize it in their houses with multiple computers. And why Windows 10 S? And that all comes back to Microsoft is a business. They wanna make money. They're sick of empowering users like you and me to, to be free and do everything they want. And they're finally putting their foot down and they're saying, you know what? We're gonna force you to use our services. We're gonna force you to use our ecosystem. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly start choking things down, which they've already started doing. They're, 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 the circle's getting smaller, getting smaller. And then before you know it, the next version of Windows 10, they're gonna start pulling out features. They're gonna say, oh, you know what? We sold enough Windows 10 S versions and the sales are good enough that we're gonna go ahead and just discontinue Pro and discontinue everything. And then you'll be forced to run an enterprise version of Windows on your desktop just to do what you were able to do before with every other SKU of every other Microsoft Windows you've ever run. All right, guys, I'm sorry this video was not supposed to be this long, but I hope that you guys learned a couple of things. I hope that you guys know some stuff that I don't. You can leave it down in the comments. I would love to look at it. Also, come over to Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. And also, if you guys love what I do, I just recently started a Patreon. I would love it if you guys can come over and support me in that endeavor. I'm trying to get off the YouTube nipple, so to speak and try to make a living on my own. Because you guys know with your other YouTubers, I'm sure you've heard about AdSense breaking down and ad revenues going down and, and companies are fleeing from, from YouTube because of controversies and stuff like that. That really hurts my bottom line. And for me to keep doing this, I need support from you guys. If you guys are already watching my videos without an ad blocker, you're already doing an amazing job. You don't even have to worry about the Patreon unless you want to, but I would urge every one of you that can afford a dollar or so to go over to my Patreon campaign. It's linked down there in the video description. It'll help me keep making videos. And the best part is I get to talk to you guys on Patreon back and forth privately and have a dialogue. And I've also put some perks in there for some of the guys, depending on what kind of donation you give, you'll actually have special permissions and stuff on my Discord server um, so that you get recognized for help. Helping out. I know a lot of you guys don't like Patreon. A lot of you guys are probably going to bitch down in the comments, but unfortunately this is a business. And if I want to keep making these videos for you guys, I'm going to need your support. Thank you so much. And until next time, seriously, Microsoft, seriously.